and making some freezer meal breakfasts. Normally, I am not a huge freezer meal fan. I'll do one or two, um, well, a couple. I'll do a batch or two late spring for summer, like just to um, have something available on those nights that, you know, summer you're like out in the garden, you're preserving, you're tired, you're going right up until dinner, you don't feel like cooking. But I do like freezer breakfasts. So um, I've only been making freezer breakfasts for like a year maybe, maybe that. Um, I, I am a stickler about my kids eating a breakfast before school. That's not Pop-Tarts and cold cereal and stuff like that. Um, but even though I get up a lot earlier than they do, I have a lot I'm trying to squeeze into my morning and I like to not rush and cram it. So it is really nice to have some healthier options ready to go. Also, we're going on a trip soon. And I also, I always have um, the breakfast for the first morning we're back planned because oftentimes we're not getting in as late this time as we, as we often do, but even still, like you don't, when you're coming back from the trip, you don't wanna think about the next morning's breakfast. You don't want to go to the store or whatever. So I always like to have something ready. I can just pop out the freezer that night in the next morning. I can just pop it in. My kids will be going to school the morning after we get back. So got to have something ready. So today I am making some oatmeal chocolate chip muffins. Some, I like, even though they have chocolate chips in them, they're not as bad as a lot of muffin recipes. Sometimes I feel like muffin recipes are an excuse to eat a cupcake for breakfast. Anybody else feel that way? Like, they're so sweet sometimes. This one's a little on the less sweet side. Um, so I'll be making the chocolate chip oatmeal muffins. I'm gonna make breakfast burritos, a hash brown casserole, some breakfast cookies, and croissant breakfast sandwiches. And um, another reason I'm doing this, besides having the morning after breakfast from our trip, is going on the trip, I wanna use up a lot of the stuff we have. I have tortillas to use up, I've got cheese to use up, I have lunch meat to use up, I have eggs. I freeze dried three dozen eggs last week and I still have this. My dad will be here taking care of the house and the chickens and stuff, but, and he can eat eggs, but he's not gonna be eating this many on his own. So um, I'm gonna use up as many as I can of those today because we'll still be getting several eggs a day. Um, so I'm gonna get started with the muffins. Okay, I am doing my muffins in the stand mixer because it's faster and easier. You don't have to, you have to be careful not to over mix quick breads if you do it in the stand mixer. Um, just, let's see here. Um, the What's usually annoying about this recipe for me is that they are, it's one recipe makes a dozen and a half and I want to, that's like, it's a weird amount to me. Um, I feel like I usually only have one muffin pan up here for my freezer cooking days. I have extras downstairs. I went to pull out my basement for this, but I don't um, like to just use one, clean it out, do six more muffins. It's just weird to me. But the good news for freezer cooking is that I can just double the recipe and I will have three dozen, which should be three different breakfasts for us. So I need to double it. That means I need three cups of oats. Should I have the oven on the right? 400 is good. My oven automatically goes to 350 when I turn it on. So this is a half cup measure that I keep in my jar. So three cups, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I need some flour as well. Two and two thirds cup flour, so four, five and a third cups of flour. I might have just enough. This is the only thing I'm doing today, I think, that takes flour. One, two, three, four. Five. I always kind of fluff it up with my scooper before I I measure just to make sure it's light and fluffy. Need about a third. I don't, I'm not a super exact measure and I've never had a problem, so. Oh 
Okay. So next, two thirds cup of sugar. I go a little bit less on the sugar, but two thirds means I need one and one third. I'll probably just do one. This is a third cup measure. Four teaspoons, so I need two tablespoons of baking powder. <clears throat> and a teaspoon of salt. together. This is a, a rather large amount for my mixer, but it does, it does work. I push it to its limit. Get this as mixed as I can before I add stuff. Then I don't have to worry as much about getting it all mixed in there without overbeating it. All those eggs up in there. Okay. Eggs beaten, so I need to have, have four eggs. I already have a chicken tub for my eggs, my eggshells, and my scraps of whatever. I will link the recipe that I'm making here below. It is not mine, it's from Money Saving Mom. Just know that I'm doubling it today. chickens, the eggshells. I know a lot of people will like bake them and crumble them and stuff and give them to them. It's good for their calcium for the making more eggs, um, hardening the shells, but I've never had a problem with giving them the raw eggshells. They've never eaten the eggs or I've never had an issue like that. I'm going to rinse my fingers. And grab a fork. so that I can beat these up real quick. Okay, I'm going to need three cups of milk for this. Now, it calls, here's, what, here's another thing I do. The recipe calls for a cup and a half of milk, so double that's three. When it comes to baked goods, I often use half the milk and substitute the other half with water just to save on milk and money. Um, so, We'll see what I have in here. That. So I will do a cup and a half of milk and a cup and a half of water. I mentioned that I only have like two to two and a half hours to get this done today. I hope I didn't bite off more than I can chew. Okay, so there's that. Go get some water. Okay, the water. Um, get my egg in there. I like to do melted butter instead of olive oil. Two sticks of butter. I'm gonna do this. Over here. So I'm gonna these cut up so they melt better. Because these are pretty cold.
all that. So the next time I'm going to get my hands sprayed. which one from Pan I use all the time and which ones I use for freezer cooking days or large batches like making something for an event. Make sure that all the little edges got done. start on the stove while these are in the oven because I need the oven like three times for these meals today so All right. mostly melted butter there the point where it is almost mixed together and this is where I want to add the chocolate chips because I don't want to over mix it. Um, I don't measure chocolate chips by the way. Feel free to measure them in your own. Yeah, it is warmed. Um, just a handful more. the bag out if there's ever any muffins when I'm putting them in the pan that I feel like are short on chocolate chips I'll put a couple on top before I put them in the oven and the funny thing is my daughters always reach for those first thinking that they have so many chocolate chips because you can see some on top but those are the ones that have the least like the batter at the end that has none left so they're only on top that's the funny thing they are fooled all right I'm gonna get these into muffin pans Sorry, I disappear. I'm a clean as you go kind of person. And I've already got stuff in the dishwasher right now, so that's going to have to wait to get all the way cleaned. Make sure I get everything off the bottom of this. And then these are pretty good with my large candy scoop. So I was planning on well, not doing this today. I was planning on doing this tomorrow. I wanted to get some gardening and cleaning done today, but it's raining. <laughs> It's raining outside and it's gonna rain on and off all day. And while that makes, makes the weather cooler for gardening, it is um, not great. I don't like to be wet and muddy. Um, so I'm hoping that tomorrow I'm able to get out there. We'll see. Decide to go ahead and do this today instead of that. All right, let's see. Um, Got a little tiny bit of batter, so I'm evening out. A couple that are just have slightly less. I'm scraping the bowl, it's not like a lot of batter. I do like to use, I'm gonna have to scrape the bowl anyways to get it clean. And um, it's just better, it bakes better if everything is the same size. Up with soapy water. Rinse my 
fingers. While that is filling up, I do have a couple I need to add some chocolate chips to. See, I'll put like three or four on top and they'll think, they'll think it's loaded. It looks like I poured in a lot, but once it was mixed into all that batter, it really wasn't that much as far as chocolate chips. Okay. These can go back and you no, know, I'm these out because I'm making them in breakfast cookies. All right, these are going in the oven. I'll be hand washing that mixer later because I'm going to reuse it when I do my breakfast cookies. And let's get started on the breakfast burritos. So, um, let's see. I made a couple pans, eggs, sausage, and hash browns. My family likes potato in their breakfast burritos. So, I will do the sausage in one and then do the eggs right after that. Um, I do need a floss and hash browns though. Today are just um, frozen hash browns from Trader Joe's. Um, they're fairly inexpensive. They don't have crazy ingredients in them. It's surprising what they put in hash browns. Have you ever noticed that? So I'm just getting this started. While that's getting started, I'm going to start getting some eggs ready to scramble. Let's see. I have, I think I counted that I have 11 tortillas that I'm trying to use up. So I'm going to go ahead, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think I'm going to do like 18 eggs. Um, like in the bowl, see if that looks like it might be enough. Um, 
long as I can get the hash browns coated in the oil, then I'm good. And my burner does have issues every now and then. Some salt, pepper. Toss it around some more. You could also put, sometimes I put green chilies in here. My husband likes that. My daughter, not so much. So I'm getting, there's the burner. All right, let me get this. Some of these are small because my babies, my little ones that are, are just starting to lay, they lay smaller eggs in the beginning. They're real cute though. One egg container down, three to go. I don't know if you saw this sitting on my egg thing. My daughter, my youngest, made this in a STEM camp she went to this summer. It's 3D printed. His name is Pokey, the porcupine. He's actually a hedgehog, which she doesn't like for me to point out, but it holds toothpicks. It's got holes all over the top for holding toothpicks. Funny. All right, two more, please. Two more eggs. I might need a bigger chicken bowl. Or I might need to cook some of these so that they can last longer before I give them to the chickens so I cook them all at once. I am just using my spatula to break up the meat and the hash browns here and getting them flipped and turned so that they can be browned on all sides and also seasoning the hash browns a little bit more after I tasted them. slightly older. I hope they're still good. Hmm. Right. And that's probably still fine. The test will be if they tear while I'm rolling them. Doing 
like maybe a, not right around a quarter cup of cheese. And the awesome part about making food at home is you can make it however you want it. My husband and daughter both like a certain combination of breakfast burritos, but it can be hard to find the exact combination you want out and about. Um, like potato, do you want sausage, do you want bacon, do you want ham, do you want potato or no potato, do you want cheese or no cheese. I also find um, it's when you make it at home, we are better when we make our own food about distributing everything so that you have all the ingredients in every bite. You know what I mean? You ever order something at a restaurant and like all the sour cream is on the tip of the burrito or something like that. And however many burritos that will fill, I will do that many. It's also okay. Just want to make sure that that gets in the water. All right. Um, sauce it. Need a slotted spoon. I totally forgot to move the camera at this point, but I was just distributing the sausage evenly amongst all of the tortillas that were on the counter so that I could finish assembling my breakfast burritos. I have like half of one of those, half of one of those burritos. 
pounds of the sausage left, um, probably not quite half, I will put this in a freezer bag and put it in the freezer for some other time. Put this in the bowl so when it cools I can freeze it. And then I'm going to use the fat that's in there from the sausage to cook my eggs in. Along with some butter because I like that flavor. I like to let my muffins sit for about one minute in the pan. Um, they start to kind of loosen, so it's easier to get them out. I don't leave them very long though, because then they'll start to sweat. So what I do, let me get water in this. What I do is take a clean knife, go around, tilt them on their side. So there is um, airflow. Then they don't sweat, but they can finish cooling in here. Once I have more room on the counter over there, I'll move these over so they can cool better. So my eggs now. Salsa is as drained as it's going to get. So, we'll put it on a couple. Looks like four. won't be in the burrito when it's thawed. Okay, I need to get the mixer washed out so that I can get started on the breakfast cookies now that the oven's free. Normally, I start a freezer cooking day with a clean dishwasher so I can add stuff as I go. But today, wasn't in the cars. Alright, so my cookies. I have not frozen my breakfast cookies before, so this is going to be weird while I figure out the measurements because the recipe I use, I multiply in my head anyways, and then now I have to multiply it more. So I'm going to do a triple recipe. Oh goodness. There's not very many ingredients in this. Uh, 350, I need to put the oven down. All right, so normally I need a cup and a half of oats, so three, um, four and a half cups, so. sauce and peanut butter. Um, all right, now you're going to really see how I do things. So normally a cup and a half of applesauce. So um, that's still four and a half cups. Oh, that's a lot. All right, I'm going to clean out this one. This is how you know how I really do things. I don't, I really don't measure. The last, uh, two, this this one more of last year's applesauce. 
so we're almost out, but luckily this is time, time of the year. I'll be able to go soon over and get some at the local place I like to go to. Um, let's see, then I need normally three quarters of a cup of peanut butter, yeah, so one and a half, two and a quarter cups of peanut butter. This is creamy, use what you like. I'm gonna have to use this whole jar and a little bit of the next one. It's always a little bit tough to get out when it comes from the fridge. jar. I will try to write the recipes for these in the description box below. Let me wash my hands. are the oats, applesauce, and peanut butter. I need vanilla. That's not enough vanilla. I need my big jar. I'll have to refill it later. Hmm. About a tablespoon only because it's such a big recipe. I mean, triple it. Um, the vanilla and salt, yep, salt, and then the chocolate chips, and we're ready. Okay, let's get this going. You don't have to worry about getting tough if you over mix them. It's not, it doesn't have glutinous flour in it. So mix to your heart's content. Of course, you can do this by hand. Looks like I need a few more chocolate chips. Okay, I think these are going to be ready to go goodness there. And get my cookie sheets ready. Okay, I'm going to move these. Okay, they're getting cool already. Move them over so they can start cooling over there. mats. I think I can fit all three dozen on two mats. Um, normally I do a dozen on one mat, but there, there's also plenty of space around them, so I'm going to try to, they don't really spread a ton, so I'm going to try to just squeeze 18 per sheet. Smash these down a little bit. 
because they don't spread. And I have some clumps here of chocolate chips and some of these must be a side effect of doing so many at one time. Pull them off the sun and put them on others. fingers and start the second tray. grabbing another small pan and putting a smaller seal pat in it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I, yeah, I've got a good four in there. I have a small one too, so let's see here. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just going to put them in here. I'm just gonna put it in here. That's precarious. With my smaller mat. All right, let's get these in the oven. And these need to go for like 18, 16 minutes. I think I normally cook them a little bit longer. But we'll do 16 and just see how they come out. All right. Let's get these eggs on the burritos. is clean. I cleaned it right before I started the video because I always clean. For some reason I can't um, start a big project where I know I'm gonna make the kitchen all dirty without starting with a clean. Another weird quirk. I need to remember that these three are the ones with salsa so I can mark them that way. Four. Some of these are gonna be full. And if I make too many, it doesn't matter to the eggs. It does not matter because I'll feed them to the chickens. They need um, and any extra protein right now when they're gonna be, pretty soon they'll be molting for fall, like getting their winter feathers in and losing feathers. And it's always good if they can have extra protein. So I just err on the side of more. More eggs. Salsa ones first. Okay, keeping those right there. This half of the tortillas, like these and those, these are slightly older than my other package. I didn't realize I had them in the fridge open a new package and so I'm trying to get them folded without them tearing. So we have 11, 12, 3, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, yeah, twelve dozen. That's good. All right. Um, so what I like to do with the burritos when I reheat them is I will take them out the night before and I will uh, thaw them in the fridge. And the morning, I'll take them out of this wrap. I put them in this because it gets it's better for freezer burn. Um, but in the morning, I will take them out of this wrap, put them in, um, what's it called? The metal stuff, aluminum foil, and then put them on a cookie sheet and, and heat them in the oven. You can do them in the microwave like a regular, not with aluminum foil, but like a regular frozen breakfast burrito, but I love what the oven does with the oil. It makes, it not only heats the burrito and gets all the cheese melty and all the stuff, but it makes this delicious, crispy but not hard tortilla on the outside. And it just makes it feel freshly made. So I like to do it that way. of my sheet for rolling these up for the freezer because I want to really protect against the freezer burn. The more layers, the better. These are cool enough too, by the way, to, um, they're not cold, but they're cool enough to wrap and not cause sweating inside them. thing that we are done with today. Oops. Okay, my family is used to my abbreviations. So Sausage, cheese, potato, plus salsa. They're always trying to figure out, like, I just put ECSP, egg, cheese, sausage, potato, and they're like, I think that this is this. freezer burn situation. Let's work next on my hash brown casseroles. 
And these are something that I have, another thing I have not frozen before, but um, I'm going to try it this time and see how it goes. Um, let's see. So I have two bags of shredded cash browns. These are 20 ounces each, a little more than I want. I'm making three casseroles. So this will be, I'm going to deep, I'm going to microfilm. cookies are done. ham. Yeah. Okay. So this is one of my chances to use a bunch of eggs and I'm going to go ahead and start a new chicken bowl because that one's full. And I'm going to do So I'll do 10 and then dump it and do 10 and you dump, dump it. I can keep track. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I need to have two left. Oh my gosh, you guys. My brain. Go to show. I'll have to take my other bowl of treats out to the chickens today and then have this bowl of shells for tomorrow. Really thick. <laughs> or I do um, 
tend to rinse my fingers a lot during this. Not only do I not like the feel of the egg on my fingers, but um, it starts to make the shell bits stick. So, and like I said, I get these to my chickens raw. I've never had a problem. I do, I do kind of squish them into smaller bits like that. I don't want them looking like an egg. So after I get the eggs in here, um, I add a little bit of milk, some salt and pepper. Like a third to a half a cup of milk. this tray get this stuff slid off the tray let's see here I feel like I need a third hand to get some more oil on here and we'll spray it on top. So that I don't have to um, toss it with the oil underneath with the hot pan. Get some salt and pepper on this. every layer. Potatoes can be really bland. Okay, and then let's get this back in for just a little while. We'll see how long it takes. You know what I'll do? I will get, we'll sit the um, casseroles aside for a second and I will get the um, muffins bagged up. That will give me some space in here. And maybe by the time I'm done with that, hash browns will be ready to go in. Okay, so I'm gonna sit this stuff all aside.
doing good on time. All right. Um, so when I come back from my trip, this will be the breakfast I pull out of the freezer the night before. I'll just sit them on the counter. In the morning, we like to just make them a little bit warm in the microwave, and then it'll be they'll be ready to go. I should label these bags before I fill them. on top and a little bit of chopped bacon, cooked bacon, um, looks and tastes really good. So what I'm going to do right now is get the ham chopped up and put in the bowls along with some cheese. Um, I have used leftover ham before. I don't have leftover ham today. But I use about half a pound per casserole. So, you know, I do have this one that needs to get used up like before the trip. And then I bought a couple extras just to um, make the other casseroles. Get those in here. My fingers are slippery. It may seem like a lot of ham, but I we like a lot of meat in our casserole. You might um, prefer sausage or bacon, or you could obviously leave the ham out. That was a little bit short, half a pound, split that one up. pre-shredded cheese by the way um, not only is it more expensive but I don't like the powder coating on it the anti-caking stuff but my daughter had wanted there's a hash browns my daughter had wanted some pre-shredded cheese she likes making salad with cheese in it and she wanted it already in for her and so I bought some when I was at Costco so I have these two big bags of cheese How these hash browns look. Hmm. I'm going to crank them up to broil and give them a couple minutes and then they'll be ready. Um, so hash browns, cheese, egg, that's pretty much all that's in here. The milk, um, 
trying to get this mixed up. I like to do it in a bowl because I like to mix all the ingredients together. You could layer them, but I just prefer it all mixed pretty evenly. I'm breaking up some of the chunks of ham that I had cut together and all stuck together. Okay, let me double check my recipe and make sure I wasn't missing anything. Grease pan, shredded hash browns, deli ham, bacon on top, shredded cheese, milk, egg. That's all I did, salt and pepper. Okay, that's all I did. Um, okay, it was for the eggs. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do an even dozen. Another container, empty, yay. Um, but yeah, I think I'm gonna do a dozen. It just looks like slightly not enough. I wanna make sure that there's enough. I'm waiting for those hash browns. I like them mixed up into the cheese and ham. All right, let's get these hash browns out and divide it up amongst the three bowls. Um, I don't have anything else going in the oven, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. Ooh. All right, since it's hot, the pan is hotter than the hash browns. I'm gonna bring the bowls over here. browns in each one. Toss together nice and even, all mixed in like that. My pans are already sprayed and ready. Oh, no, I need to cook these. What was I thinking? Uh, 350. I turned off the oven. I was like, I'm not cooking anymore today in the oven. Yes, I am. These have to go in the oven. Except for the one that I'm going to do tomorrow morning. But the other two I will cook and then freeze after they're cooled. If I have time to cook the hash browns ahead um, and let them cool a little bit, this goes a lot easier with just your hands. That's what I did last time. I tossed it with my hands. here for the eggs trying to get evenly that is when I shake it around my counters are not level in this house so Sometimes I gotta do more than shake it around. All right, so I need another dozen eggs. Okay, two down. Last one. This is nine. So I'll need 
need three more. Okay. This means I have to do my weird way of making sure that my eggs are in order in the basket. So, so double. Another dozen, not double. One. I have successfully used all but about three dozen eggs today, so that is good. Ooh, wait, I have more to do, because I'm gonna do the croissant breakfast sandwiches. Yeah, sweet. Look at this tiny little egg. This is the baby's, like here's a normal egg. The babies, when they start laying, their, sm their eggs are smaller. They're so cute though. They're so cute. So two of these are going to go in the oven right now, and then one going in the fridge for tomorrow morning. to work on the um, croissant breakfast sandwiches. Phew, I'm going to get a huge towel. I don't normally go for this many paper towels, I swear. I just, um, it was easier today. I've got half of my other washcloth type towels and cleaning rags in the laundry. Okay, so let's move some stuff over here. This is now cool. Some of these will be used in the next couple days. Um, I'm not going to put condiments on them because people in my family like different condiments. So I'm going to wait until the mornings that we eat them. And when I'm making like a certain amount for my husband, I'll do those his way. And one for my daughter, I'll do her way, yada, yada. Or they can do their own as well. So 
So there are six in a box here. I think I'm gonna do 10. These will be sausage, egg, and cheese because I had sausage. Actually, I'm gonna do a couple of bacon because I had sausage in the freezer, but there are six patties here. So I will get bacon out of the fridge to do the other four. I like the size of these, they're smaller. Not everyone likes that, some people want big ones. Um, but I eat like a small one, one of my daughters eats a small one, and my husband and my other daughter can eat more than one that way, so. Plus, sometimes they like, sometimes they like to have like one bacon, one sausage, have a little variety, stuff like that. generally get them in a shape and size that will fit on the um, croissants well. This pan's cold so it'll take a minute. Might get another pan going. Do these separate if you want in a um, like on a cookie sheet in the oven, but my oven's being used right now, so just do them in the pan. But if you're doing a ton, like some freezer cooking, you can do them. Just set, just keep them separated space wise, you know. get a rhythm going it starts to come together pretty darn quickly like we just keep moving going one way and then the other and then one way and then the other Not on, just I like 
little edge of it. Baking out. bacon today. I happen to have it for a different thing that I wanted it for and I just need to use it up. It's not what I normally buy, but sometimes I do. I'm going to finish off the opened section of it. This one is still sealed and it will last, but bacon, this is something I wanted to use up. The open one was one I wanted to use up before we left. I do have other types of cheese I can use, but I like these best with a nice sharp cheddar. Yep, awesome. Okay. Ready? Let me get the sausages onto these. Since these are small, they're a little more round, ah! rounded in shape. the croissants so I don't if I have a big one I, I tend to use two of these and cut one of them in half to go in the corners my trick to cutting bacon I do not like skimpy bacon on my breakfast sandwiches I want to get them out temperature so that they're not too warm to wrap up. But 10 croissant breakfast sandwiches. Um, let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead and individually wrap these. And then I need to do two different Bacon, egg, and bacon, egg, and cheese, and sausage, egg, and cheese. Again, I have initials B E C and S E C. All right, um, those are coming in temperature. While they are doing that, I'm pretty sure that my cookies are ready to package. Okay, I made three dozen, so I'm going to put a dozen in each bag. Make three bags. These do have to be labeled as breakfast cookies because they will look in the freezer like oatmeal chocolate chip. Rolls have another half hour still in there, and I'm gonna get these packaged up, and then the croissants should be cool enough to wrap individually. And I also have 10 minutes till my dishwasher's done, and I can swap out this mess behind me. It drives me crazy to not be able to clean up as I go. It drives me crazy. 
because normally if I'm cleaning up as I go, when I'm done, there's very little cleanup left. Almost three dozen breakfast cookies there. Okay, let's get these wrapped up. I'm doing it at the end of my roll. It's always hard to pull. Still waiting for my casseroles to come out of the oven. I've got 22 minutes. I will start cleaning up three minutes until my dishwasher is done. So I'll start on dishes and I will meet you back here when the casseroles come out of the oven so you can see what those look like. Let's see how these look. Oh yeah, those are, those are nice. That is perfect. Delicious looking. Get those both out. Oven off. So that was not bad for two and a half hours worth of work, right? I did manage while those were finishing in that 20 minutes to get a lot of things put away, get the dishes completely swapped out, hand washed a few of them. These took extra much room in the dishwasher with all the dishes I have. And these have to be hand washed anyways. Got one tub of chicken treats taken out to them. They are enjoying that, happily munching away right now. And these, most of this stuff is ready to be put in the freezer. Obviously these casseroles need to come to room temperature first. So not bad for two and a half hours. Yeah, I started at 11, it's almost 1.30. Two and a half hours worth of work. We have three breakfast casseroles with hash browns. One of them, remember, is in the fridge for tomorrow morning. I will try to tack on a picture somewhere, maybe at the end of the video, if I can remember to catch that in the morning. So we have those casseroles. We have 12 breakfast burritos, some of them experimenting with salsa. We have three dozen, one of these bags is a short one, three dozen breakfast cookies. We have 10 breakfast sandwiches, some sausage, egg, and cheese, some bacon, egg, and cheese, and we have three dozen oatmeal chocolate chip muffins. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, five different breakfasts, ready for the deep freezer and ready to make my life easier. All right. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys on the next video.